Hey, thank you for joining me on this video. Uh, today we're going to be looking at five answers to the most common lead generation questions. And uh, how did I come about this uh, headline or topic for this? I think it's basically because every business, when you think about it, is all about uh, revenue and profits. And what brings revenue? Essentially, it's uh, the customers that you have that come to your business. And obviously, profit is obviously measured by uh, the difference between how much you spend on either acquiring customers or making the products and uh, how much revenue you get from the customers that actually pay for the service or the, or the product. So that's your profit. Um, so that, that's what we want to look at today. Five answers to the most common lead generation questions uh, I, I bet you've all heard about uh, customers or, or businesses who always 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 try to look for leads you know and obviously i mean most businesses are always looking for leads you know they're, they're looking for um new contacts or create a sort of pipeline that would bring uh new customers into their business and obviously the growth so you gotta grow your revenue by a mix of uh, either getting more customers in or selling to more customers or selling more per customer so obviously the leads are very very valuable i mean but leads by themselves don't mean a thing until they actually become uh, paying customers um, my name is soji fagade i am the founder of sojifagade.com and i help small business owners uh, transform their businesses into what I call profit machines. The five questions are one, how do I get new leads or customers? The second one is who is my ideal customer? The third question is how do I convert leads into paying customers? And the fourth question is does my business need a sales funnel? And um, finally, um, will increase visibility translate into increased revenue for my business now I mean these are huge questions for most uh, businesses that probably the most common questions uh, people ask about lead generation in general but we'll, we'll take we'll take them one by one I mean the first question says how do I get uh, new leads or customers for my business I guess one of those things when you look at it and say, well, the starting point is, uh, what does your business do? I mean, which market are you into? Who are your customers in your market? What do your customers want? And how well do you provide uh, the service that your customers want? Um, there's this uh, adage that if you build it, they'll come. Um, I'm not quite sure how accurate that is in, in today's uh, real world because sometimes we build it and we build it out in the jungle and the sticks or where no one has heard about you you probably do what they call you probably end up launching to cricket I, you'll be the only one there and there's there'll be no one else coming to see you because no one knows you're there you know so you've got to find a way of um, making sure that your customers are aware that you exist how do you do that? Um, you can have to use the resources that you have at your disposal. You want to have your website, you want to have um, social media presence, uh, you might take out traditional forms of advertising, word of mouth, you know, um, your old contacts. Basically, um, use everything you have at your disposal to uh, make sure that people know about your business. And obviously, you want to try and, as much as possible target those people that uh, you think or you know will value and appreciate the area of or business or the niche that, that you're in. Now, uh, next question obviously is uh, who is my ideal customer? And this is probably one of the key elements in, um, it's like marketing 101, you know, if you don't know who your ideal customer is, then you don't know how to serve them, you don't know how to create products uh, that will satisfy their needs. You don't know 
where they shop, what their ha uh, shopping habits are, what sort of income bracket they're in, how much they prefer to spend on your products, what sort of price points uh, create difficulties or uh, make them happy, you know. So all those little variables or data that you think will be really, really useful uh, for, for your customers or knowing the sort of uh, intricacies of a, a customer's mind, then you know how best to, to, to target them. Um, there's so many formats, so, so many ways you can find out who your ideal customer is. And one of the ways is obviously to sort of try to put yourself in or to try to create uh, what they call your ideal customer profile or avatar. Now, creating your ideal customer profile avatar obviously incorporates putting yourself in the position or in the mind of, of, of a customer who, who would be your ideal customer. Uh, I mean, how much would they? Uh, what are their beliefs? Uh, what are their fears? What are their you know? So you want to sort of be able to speak to um, an ideal customer like you're speaking to an individual, you know, and you know what makes that individual tick, so that when you deliver content or a service to them, um, you can already really really ensure that whatever you're saying to them resonates with your uh, audience. Uh, thirdly, how do I uh, convert leads into paying customers. Like I said at the beginning, no matter how many leads you've got, if they don't come and buy or they don't uh, uh, translate into customers, it's almost like throwing a good money after bad, um, after bad investments, because ultimately your whole uh, end game when you Put out yourself, make yourself visible, make your products accessible, um, look at the price um, um, points, uh, you ensure that your sales are coming in, or you want to ensure that sales come in. If you don't have customers, or if you don't convert those people that have viewed your website, or have come to see your shop fronts, or have um, looked into your shop, uh, browse a few goods, into people who are actually paying for your goods or, or customers, then you'll have wasted a lot of time. So you need to create a process whereby people can uh, come in, uh, browse, get led or, 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 or directed from the point of just being mere browsers into people who actually engage actively with you with a view to actually buying your products down the line. So that's why uh, the next question come in does my business actually need a sales funnel now uh, like like you know uh, sales funnel is like a pipeline whereby it sort of measures or takes your customer through the entire uh, buying experience from when they actually um, just browsing your site or looking at your shop window so when they come into the shop, uh, pick up a shirt, so say, oh wow, this looks nice, you know, or they say, um, oh, maybe I'd best get one, and then you know, oh, what color will I get, okay, or oh, there's uh, sizes for children, or sizes for adults, I can get matching ones for my twins, you know, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, if you know what sort of things will make your customers tick, then you can, obviously, you've got products for them that would um, take them to the next level of just, not just browsing, actually buying from, from you. I'll give you a classic example. Um, say for instance you um, you've got a property development and you uh, are looking to buy or looking to sell the properties uh, to potential customers that are coming your way. Now in the first place you've got to make people aware that you've got properties to sell in the first place. You know? Now once they know that you've got properties to sell, the next thing is to uh, ensure that those properties are, uh, would be ideal for the customers that you want to sell to. Obviously, without having an ideal customer uh, profile, you don't know what sort of properties to build or to, 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 to market to your customers. So if you know that your customers, for instance, average size, family size is maybe four people, you're looking at having between maybe three, four, three or four bedroom apartments or houses, and you know that okay, they prefer to have gardens in their in their, in their house in, in in their houses. So you obviously show them uh, they are the sort of properties that would fit into their uh, uh, preferences or, or choices. You know, 
And you also know that they have a certain income bracket. So you know that the sort of property that you've uh, uh, put their way are within things that you can actually afford to buy, you know. And then from when you uh, show them this property, you now want to say, okay, hang on. How do you now get them to actually buy the property? Now, the main thing that affects people's buying decision is usually about either location or, or money, you know? How much will it cost me? And if, and if it is going to cost me a certain amount of money, would I be in a position to raise the finance to buy this property? Now, if I'm in a position to raise the finance to buy the property, how easy would it be for me to raise the finance? Now, if you show them but in actual fact, oh, it's not that difficult to actually buy it because X, Y, Z, you can actually pay the deposit in installments or the deposit will only form a certain, a tiny proportion of what your art going is on a monthly basis. Then it becomes a much more attractive proposition to them as opposed to not having that information at all. So you sort of let them by giving them information as opposed to selling to them um, uh, that, that the property that you're offer or showing to them is something that will be of immense value to them because of the location that they're looking for, so the price band, and you've made it easy for them to buy the property, you know. Now, the last question is, will increased visibility translate into uh, increased revenues or profits for my business? Now, that's it really, really is a question of how you translate visibility in, into profit. Now, in theory, it should, you know, but if you don't, have a proper sales funnel or funnel in place from whereby people know that you exist in the place or you exist in a, in a niche or in a web space or or particular uh, segment of the market then they won't know how they can actually contact you uh, gain access to your goods or your services and whether or not those goods or services are, are for them so you have to sort of create um, the process for them to move from knowing who you are, what you do, to actually um, taking an active interest with a view to learning a bit more uh, and, then to buy, and then to buy uh, from you. So uh, you can see very, very clearly that you, if you follow these this, 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 this steps, it will help you a great deal in um, converting you're just people who just browse your site or, or your shop window into actual uh, customers that buy from you and these questions in actual fact uh, it's the key questions that any business owner will ask you or will ask themselves in order to uh, see whether or not their sales funnel or sales processes actually uh, work and to see that the lead generation efforts are actually uh, yielding uh, results. Um, at the end of this, there's this uh, free uh, bonus for watching this video, which I've given to all of my um, listeners or uh, subscribers, and especially all those who want to take uh, lead generation to another level. There's a link there which takes you to uh, enable you uh, download a free worksheet on. Um, lead generation is a lead generation um, free worksheet uh, by all means uh, leave your name and your email address and we'll send you uh, a freebie and you also get uh, regular updates uh, from me as well and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel by all means uh, go there and do so and if you need to uh, find out a little bit more about me you can go to my website www.sojifagade.com and subscribe to my updates and um, I shall see you soon. Thank you so much for listening and watching.